Right, <coughs> Flighty Boxing in association with Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions. Delighted to be um, over here in Forest Hill or Forest Gate, is oh, it? Forest Gate, yeah. Forest Gate, back or beyond. Um, and we're joined by Casey Kadimi, Frank's new sign-in. How thank are you, you, Casey? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Now, you seem to be uh, training in there, taking on an awful lot of new information. How is that? I mean, it, it, I think it's great for me because if I'm going to get to that next level, I need the, the right guidance and the right teaching. Um, obviously, we just um, uh, two new coaches have been um, set up in my camp by my manager, and you know we're clicking and we're learning every day. So I mean, I mean only two, three days. So um, you know, I have to understand them what they need to t t uh, tell me. I'm mistake that I'm making and. Uh, maybe I need to tell them a bit more about about my style as well. But it's just we get about them, uh, this week is we just get to know each other. So it struck me in there. It was almost probably like a a golfer rebuilding his swing or something like that. It was that technical, that tiny little adjustments that you were being asked to do. It must be, in a way, it must be quite frustrating. You sort of think, well, I've always done that. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, um, I mean, every every boxer's got their own style, um, and um, the most important thing in boxing is the basics. So um, maybe because I've been training for like a month by myself, maybe I picked up some bad habit, mm. and um, and I, I think that's where I'm, I'm making mistakes. I picked up bad habits, they just correcting my bad habits. Um, but it, I'm 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 very grateful as long as I'm learning. Every day is a learning, and every day I'm learning something new. So it's good. It's good for me. Out of the ring since December, but it was a special night for you over at your pool. We WBO European Super Flyweight title after eight fights. Must be happy with that. Um, I'm truly grateful. I'm truly grateful. Um, I want to thank all my, my. I wasn't able to get that fight without my fans, and uh, my fans wanted me to get out. And um, my manager got the work done and got the title that we, uh, my team and I, I mean my, my fans and I really wanted. So it was, it was a great night. It was one of my specialist nights in boxing. But I think better night is going to come ahead and under Frank Warren. Well, it will because I mean effectively that's kind of secured you a promotional platform, which basically hands the onus all on to you, doesn't it? Because you'll go as far as your ability will take you. The pathway's yeah. there, yeah. now it's down to you. Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, I mean, I've been waiting almost since I've started boxing. I've been waiting for this kind of stage and the stage is set for me and I just need to, I just need to put the walk in and shine and everything else is there. How frustrating was it beforehand? Because from turning pro, just clocking up a few yeah. fights here and there, it moved quite slowly for you, didn't it? Um, it was hard because super flyweight. I mean, it's really hard to get an opponent, and we was in a small hall show, so opponent, you know, they, they won't give, they won't guarantee to come and fight. So you know, I had about six fights cancelled on the night. But um, that must it, have been destroying when when you sold uh, tickets it, and everything. So. Yeah, I sold tickets. I made the way. That's I mean, that's yeah. the uh, hardest for for any boxers to make the way, and then end up the fight being cancelled on, on a fight day. So, but I mean, to get to this kind of stage, I think you have to go through those stuff, and so uh, you know. I mean, I'm just appreciated as, as I've come to this, uh, as this far and I'm going to appreciate that goal further. How much of a turning point was it for when you hooked up with Warren Management? Obviously, that's not Queensbury Promotions, that's Warren Management, Alfie, Robert, Bobby. How much of a turning point was that? It was great because uh, they gave me a clear vision of um, where, can they, where they can take me and what the future lies ahead for me. And, um, you know, we had we had many meetings and you know as soon as I, I signed up with them they got me um, two, uh, two fight. One of the fights was against a Tanzanian kid which was a six rounder just so kind of warm up. The second fight was for Tao and you know mm. <laughs> things worked out well so yeah. Is there much of an amateur pedigree behind you? Um, you know I never took the amateur seriously. I, mean, I had 28 amateur fight but I didn't took the amateur really seriously. I mean you know I remember training twice a week in Peacock and then going on a fight. Uh, so. It wasn't really uh, serious, but you know, I still did all right, and I think in the pro, well, I'm taking it seriously. And that's one thing I've learned, is that um, the more I take seriously, the more my ability is going to come. And I'm, there's so much learning to do, and there's so much, um, uh, there's so much ability in me. If I, if I put the walk in, um, I think I can get to the top stage. Did you, when you decided to lace up the gloves, did you discover some sort of natural talent, natural aptitude for the sport? Um, when I, I mean, I, 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 what it was when I was young, I, I liked fighting. That's one thing I really liked. And um, 
When I laced up the glove, um, you know, and that was my first ever coach. It was, um, he, was a, he, was a, he was an ex-professional, form of professional uh, boxer. But he was a coach who was in a life of fighting. And, you know, he told me, he said, kid, you need to focus and you can, be, you can go far. But, I, you know, I, I liked the boxing because of the fighting. I didn't really think that I'm going to get this far. But um, now here we are. Since <laughs> right, we'll come back to your tear away youth in a minute then. Um, but I think from speaking to you a number of weeks ago and getting a little flavour of your backstory I mean it is a, it's a fascinating tale uh, departing Kabul in Afghanistan with your family back in 1998 yeah. obviously you're not going to remember that no. but you say you do remember a little bit about two years later yeah. in Pakistan and leaving Pakistan yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this remarkable thing where it seemed like you went on a two-year journey yeah. to reach the UK okay. now I think the likes of me just can't imagine how how you vo travel for two years yeah. on foot, avoiding detection? Can you sort um, of explain we was, uh, a little bit? I mean, every every country that we was going through was staying. We, we were staying different nights, different places, and uh, you know, I remember we was in Russia for about four or five months, almost more than probably six months. Can't exactly remember the time, but we were there. We were still in a high that place. We rented a little place where we was fifteen of us crammed, twenty of us crammed in two different separate flats. So, um, what do you do for food and money? I mean, we had uh, one family member in, in Russia that was working. Yeah. Um, he was working, you know, he has his own family, but he was helping out, he was bringing food for us, just to. And also, um, I mean, the, um, the um, traffickers that was bringing us, because we came with, with traffickers, they guide us through the routes. I mean, they brought us some food, so they would bring us, because they would, you know, my brother paid them to look after us in a way as well, so I supply see, food yeah. and all that. Your so, brother was already here, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, my brother was here, so, I mean, he came in 19 that year, so, um, you know, he was, he was sending a little bit of money to, in order for us to feed us something. But I remember we, we, all we eat was we eating uh, main was sausages mm -hmm. and uh, tuna cans, there was nothing really... A nice balanced diet yeah. there then. <laughs> That's what it was, and as long as our uh, tummy was full, it was, it was grateful. Did you feel like at every day, at every stop, like you were in peril of capture? I mean, I was so young, I wasn't really, I mean, that wasn't really in my mindset. I mean, for me, it was like an adventure. I was like, well, I, you know, but I see in my family, the elders, I see them, they were in fear, they were in worries. They, was in emotion, they, were, they were very emotional, you know, they were very emotional because, um, you know, the, 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 I think, if the, the only people that will get really, you know, abused is the elders. Mm. And if they get caught by the police or border, they, you know, they they will get punished. So, I mean, I was young, I didn't really know, but um, they, I mean, they were more in fear, they were more emotions and all that. Had you been captured, would it be in a case of being moved back to Pakistan? Oh no. Um, well, it depends on different borders, different. Way. I mean, recently, and I think it was in Iran, 14 Afghan refugees that was in a car, a cramped up in one car, got set and fired. The whole car got set and fired by the police. Just police doesn't like them people, refugees crossing their border, so they, you know, I've seen in Slovakia they killed a couple of <coughs> Afghanis that was passing the border, they beat them up to death, so, you know, they're different, they, they treat it differently, there's uh, certain countries that, you know, they went, well, they, because they got a little um, inflated boat, there's about 20 people then, as they're crossing border, the, the, um, you know, the officers come and they, you know, they puncture the, the boat, they leave them in the middle of the sea and most of them drown, so, it, it, we knew all of that consequences, we knew all of that. Every, every story that you've heard since about refugees, I presume only increases your own sort of uh, relief at your own family having come through safely, even though it took an awful long yeah, time. Took, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it is, uh, I'm truly grateful. Uh, you know, we knew that someone was looking down on us and blessed us to get to this far. I mean, I've, when we went to France in the camp that we was in, Calais, I think it was, there was people that was there for four years. Um, arrival in the UK. Help difficult was it to adapt? I mean, I presume you didn't have the language already in the locker and you arrived, um, like I say, in East London. Yeah. How much of a culture shock was it for you? You would have been eight, I presume, wouldn't you? Yeah, I mean, um, my, it wasn't, I mean, English wasn't my first, uh, my sec my, not my first language and not my second language. So as I, uh, as we went uh, across the countries to get here, I've learned many different languages as well. And so it was, um, it was very hard for me to pick up the English language. I'm still learning. How on earth did you learn languages on your journey across when you were trying to evade capture continually? I mean, you know, it's, it's just in, in case you get lost. So we had to learn little bit things, you know, hello, how are you? This, this, you know, certain things. So, I mean, we, we, we learned, we, we, we was bored as well. There was nothing else to do. So we, we were learning some new the language. The final part of your journey across the channel 
Was that an official journey or was that in a dinghy or on the back of a lorry? Or it was the back of the lorry, yeah, it was in Callis. I mean, and like I said, in, in Callis, in Paris, there was uh, people over four or five years there. Just, you know, their luck wasn't working with them to get to UK, so they, they were jumping on long r lorries. Because they were putting around the lorries, so wherever the lorry goes, sometimes it goes in Finland and Switzerland, different part of, um, sorry, different part of um, Europe. So where did the lorry sort of drop you off? Just drop you off in London, did it? No, the first time, the first lorry we jumped in took us oh, to... I so then, when you, um, when you sort of uh, land in the country, did you have to declare yourself or make yourselves official or how yeah. does that work? So we, we knew that when we were here at a certain time, when we hear the, the train noise, yeah. that, that, that we reached London. So um, I remember the, after a couple of hours after the, the, the horn, the sheep horn, they start uh, hitting the lorry until the driver n noticed that we're in behind uh, inside the lorry. So the, I think the driver called the police and. Okay, we've got a, a little change of scenery. The camera was getting a bit too hot outside. Apologies for all this. Um, like you say, you're talking about your arrival in London at the back of the lorry. Mm -hmm. Like I say, how does that process come of getting dropped off the lorry and then getting on with some sort of life? Yeah. I mean, once we uh, we noticed that we are, uh, once we noticed that we in, uh, we got to London, I mean to UK. Um, once we noticed that we got to UK, um, we we heard the horn, the sheep horn. So after a couple of hours, we start banging. The family start banging the lorry until the uh, driver noticed that we're inside. So he, they called up the police, and the police opened up the lorry. It took us down um, and took us to the cell. It kept us to the cell for a couple, uh, for about seven, eight hours. Yeah. Until they took that thing, it was in Brighton, they put us in a hotel, and then uh, we told them that we have a brother here and all this stuff. And uh, then my brother came and picked us up from the hotel. And he took us, he took us, to, he, 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 he basically said that I'm gonna look after them, uh, I'm gonna give my guarantee, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, um, I'm gonna like um, be able to. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. So look after you and yeah, guarantee yeah, your finances. Yeah, that's, and that's it. Yeah, and all that. So we was in Dawson. Uh, so we was in N1 North London. That's the first place I got, I got off. And then they registered me to St Jude's St Paul's, um, which was uh, my primary school uh, in um, New Dawson. And um, from then it was it was till now. So what was it like as a little Afghani boy, sort of landing at school? Like I so say, still probably with not a lot of English in the locker. Yeah, I'm sort I mean, of trying to take it all in. I mean, it must have been like a, a different world to you. It was, it was, and, it, and you know, the, the primary school was a great school. Uh, my primary school was a great primary school, and um, everyone was great, everyone was nice, it was, every, everyone was friendly. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, it was nothing bad, nothing yeah. that someone bullied them or anything like that. So it was, it was, it was good. It's London, isn't it? <laughs> London, yeah. So everyone's from somewhere, aren't exactly, they? Exactly, yeah. And they, 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 so they was good, they welcomed me very well. Did you find um, like an Afghani community almost quite quickly? No, uh, I didn't find Afghan community at all. I think when I was in college, that's when I started meeting some Afghan, making some Afghan friends and start meeting some other Afghans. I mean, our population was really low uh, during them times. Uh, but now, uh, past four or five years, it's increased dramatically because uh, of how much war was still there and how many other refugees that was on the way that got, they got here late. So right now the population is it's high, um, so it's, yeah, I mean, I'm, now I'm really connected to the Afghan community in here. I don't know what the political situation is currently in Afghanistan, but is there the possibility of you visiting there one day or going back there and seeing what, seeing where it all happened for you? Um, I mean, I've, I've, I haven't been there since I've left it. Uh, my family has. My family, is it too loud? Is it too loud? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. yeah quiet down a second. <laughs> so your family have been back, yeah? Yeah, they've been they've been back. Yeah, they went to um, they went they went there to get uh, my brother's wedding. Get my one of my other brother married there, and um, they've been there. Yeah, they've been, I think they were once there, and I'm the only person in the family that haven't went there. So um, you're the one that can't remember it anyway. No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, <laughs> but I, I, I you know, uh, I promised myself if I do go back there. Because my motherland and you know uh, my, my parents are very traditional, um, I would like to go you know as um, I take a big girl, take a huge trophy out there, saying that you know that's where I came from, so my motherland. So. But yeah, I mean I'm always going to be Afghan British, British first, because they've given me the opportunity. 
but Afghanistan is where I've, my journey started. So, how closely have you followed sort of political developments in Afghanistan, just to sort of see how the land lies over the last twenty years? I think hasn't changed that much, to be honest. I've, I've seen some photos and that, and you know, had some family member uh, making some, um, you know, uh, building properties, but there's too much su uh, suicide out there and. Um, their properties got destroyed, so they, they end up leaving the country. So they're in the Canada now. I mean, it's not. It's the same thing. People that are still there, they're going to be leaving out because every day someone's getting killed there. It's a hard place to picture without having been there. Because if you just go on your imagination and what you hear on the news, you just imagine caves, don't you? Because yeah, all yeah, you hear about is caves. Yeah, it's true. I mean, Afghanistan was very modern, and in, in, I think 1980s, 1970, it was very, very modern. Um, city Kabul was I mean you had people it was like it was like Europe I mean you had buses you had building cinemas um, clubs and everything uh, but obviously as most uh, civ the, the war started between Taliban and the Soviet Union um, the country went upside down and till now it's corrupted and uh, it's not safe for nobody talking about safe for anybody tell me about your um, scrapping days then as a schoolboy who used to like fighting so were you a little playground bully were you? No I mean uh, as I went to my second school um, I tend to I thought that hanging around with the wrong people was cool so um, you know I get into a little trap and it wasn't good I mean now I look back to it I'm you know I'm the same of it but um, my family didn't like it when my family find out I was I go school from school day they told me listen you've, you've been you've been coming from a country that was war. Why do you want to come here? You just land a fortune. Start do something. Like there's so much things that you can do. And as I got into boxing, I I, I see clear vision and I see how much you know. Um, I'm grateful I was at that time. But I was young and you know I, you live and you learn and I've learned a lot since then. What's next for you now? I mean, obviously, with being your weight and having just signed with Frank Warren, people are automatically going to chuck Sonny Edwards at you, Charlie Edwards now names like that you when i spoke to you the other week you're like sort of hang on a minute they've got more experience on the platform yeah. i need to taste some of that is that yeah. still your thinking um definitely i mean um you know when you start swimming when you learn how to swim you don't go straight into the deep end um you know um the two brothers are very talented um they're they're very talented and they're very hard work uh, boxers and um, you know, they're very pretty with amateur fires uh, not that I can't get there, I'll be 100% get there and I'll 100% would love to share the ring with him and I'll definitely, definitely see myself getting the win when, when we do fight but um, right now, uh, you know, they're, they're, it's, their, it's their, their stages for them and uh, I can't put myself in with them and I can't go to the deep end straight away right now, it would be, I think, kind of stupid of me. Would it be fair to say but a year ago when you were on this small hall, a small hall circuit, if you'd have been offered a fight against one of them, you would have just taken it for the opportunity. Yes, uh, at that time, because I was, um, you know, I mean, at that time I would have probably took it because of getting to the big stage. Now that I'm in a big stage, I think I need to be a bit more wise, uh, wiser um, to get to, to where I want to get. Um, like I said, they want to make history, I want to make history, and um, why not put, have the biggest fight? I'm going to fight down the line, but have, have, make it as the biggest fight in, in the British Civil Flower. How much of a part does wanting to be probably the first Afghan world champion appeal to you? Oh, that's too much. I mean, uh, right now, Afghanistan has never been number one in the world in anything um, as a professional. So I would love, I would love to make her history. You know, I'm the first Afghan British to get the, the, the Europe and the UK. Um, I want to be, you know, I want to, I want to be the first Afghan world champion in, in all athletes. I mean, I'm the first athlete ever to do it. So. Maybe take a fight out there one day. Uh huh? Maybe take a fight out Oh, definitely, out there one definitely. Day. I think, um, I, I mean, I definitely would love to do that. There's, there's, um, there's so much boxing. I mean, af uh, combat, combat sports there, and it has so much fans. And it's coming from UK to there will open many gates to the Afghan, Afghan athletes. As well. Hey, it's been great talking to you. Sorry about the few interruptions with the camera and the heat. I'm sort of uh, not used to getting stopped by sunlight in this country, but <laughs> congratulations on your Thank career you. development and we wish you every success for the future. Thank you so much for having me, Rich. I appreciate Cheers, it. Crazy.